His Excellency Mr. Grola Zadiak, President of Marshall Island. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Mr. President, Excellencies, Yahweh, I bring you warm greetings from the people of the Republic of the Marshall Islands, and I wish to associate this statement with the delivered by the Prime Minister Tillman Thomas of Grenada on behalf of the Alliance of Small Island States. Leader of the world, I have gathered here in unprecedented numbers. It is now a scientific, scientific fact that we cannot afford to wait any longer. We are all driven, driven by the strong feeling, a fear that a disaster is on our doorstep. The extreme vulnerability of the Marshall Island is no secret. My country lies an average of two meters above the sea level. We cannot retreat, for we have no higher ground. This is no longer a choice between fast action and long-term commitment. We need it all, and on a far greater scale and with a greater urgency than every people. The window of safely reversing the atmospheric pill of a greenhouse catches has all but closed. Global emissions must be big by 2015. We cannot adapt to climate impacts when necessary support remains too often out of our reach. But all the money in the world will do little good in a two-degree world. Anything above 1.5 degrees of warming threatening our fair survival. There is no price tag on our statehood. Mr. President, our island islands and our land, our heritage, our tradition, and our culture. We will do everything in our power to protect that. We have resolved to build our resilience, resilience to reduce our dependence on fossil fuel imports, despite the fact that we already contribute almost nothing to global emissions. We have specific initiative to product, protect our core infrastructure and our vulnerable coastal resources. Under the Micronesia challenge, we aim to conserve at least 30% of our coastal resources and 20% of our agroforestry resources among the place, places most, most vulnerable to climate impacts. And the Marshall Island will launch, together with our Pacific neighbors, Palau and Micronesia, the Green Micronesia, Green Energy Micronesia strategy, under which the Marshall Island is committed to reduce our emissions by 40% by 20, 2020. A core pillar of the green, Micronesia, green Energy Micronesia plan is to harness our renewable resources, our sun, our wind, and our oceans to provide sustainable and achievable energy security. Even with ambitions, action by our nation to reduce our emissions, we need far greater delivery on concrete adaptation. 
to safeguard our people and resources. We are among the most vulnerable, and we are already acting. The international community must ensure direct and prioritize access to a new and additional finance, not in 2012, 2012, but starting now. We do not need paperwork or endless cycles of distant studies. We need progress to be feasible, feasible in our global community. Mr. President, for 20 years, Marshallese leaders have repeated the strong message that our survival is not negotiable. It is now come to the point that United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees envisions that the Marshall Islands is being stateless by mid-century. This is an issue of our security, our fundamental freedoms and human rights and our sovereignty. For those at the front line of climate impacts, it is painful to accept that the world's biggest polluters would respond with such weak words and empty ambitions. The only way to arrive at a true agreement, a consensus for a new low carbon world is to provide a strong legal instrument for confidence building, finance delivery, and technology sharing. Just our 3D would capture what must be a new global conscious. We have proposed, together with our allies in the small island state, that consciences must be enraged and trained in legal planting framework that build our existing structure by extending Kyoto Protocol and take them to the next level with a second treaty which enshrined firm action by all nations. A political assurance is no substitute for legal affirmation. It is alarming to the world that we have not yet arrived to a new legal binding climate treaty and perhaps we risk not knowing exact, exactly when and how our negotiator will deliver such an agreement. It is not time that has been lacking. We saw in recent months such an unfortunate lowering, lowering of ambitions that by views of some non-binding political agreement could replace a legal treaty. Now, time is short, but we must not lose sight of our goals. Mr. President, the Marshall Island is firmly focused on advancing a real and legally binding delivery treaty on which, on action which attaches the most vulnerable nations. Mr. President, our sovereignty cannot be coldly treated away behind the closed doors of negotiating rooms. Distant promises are no longer enough. Expression of sympathy and unmasked by commitment. My people and the world deserve more. Our agreement, our consensus, must make the livelihood of the most vulnerable the benchmark for measuring our success. The agreement in its word and its numbers must explicitly lay guarantee our right to survival consistent with international law.